Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto, and in this video, I will explain how to compute the 3D workspace of a um, robot, in particular the IRB140 robot with Copelesim. But we're going to compute this workspace as a 3D volume because this video is a continuation of a previous video that I include in the in the field in, in the in the video description associated uh, to that. We also have some some files that I also include there. That uh, the the purpose of the previous video was to generate or to compute this uh, workspace, but as a 2D plane. But now here in this video, we're going to compute this uh, workspace as a 3D volume. So will help us uh, to uh, determine if any trajectory that we try to uh, plan with this robot is within or not that workspace, and therefore if it's feasible or not to to uh, compute or to to achieve uh, that uh, trajectory. Okay, so the idea of um, is to use uh, Copilisim, but also uh, software's MATLAB and Mesh Mixer, so we can compute this uh, 3D volume of the workspace. So, uh, in order to proceed, you, first thing you have to do is to run this uh, uh, example here that is provided, as I said. That includes um, just a demo that it's computing all possible positions of the wrist, which is a point here, that are not in collision with any other object in the scene, particularly the floor and the robot itself. So all po possible positions free of um, collisions are registered in a file with all those coordinates. And uh, we are just simply performing a sweep with the joints 2, which is that one here, 3, which is that one here, also the fourth and fifth joint, okay? If you run this code, you will see how it works. You can see that it's just simply performing many, many uh, movements and computing if this, uh, if the wrist position is in collision or not. And if it's not in collision, then we register that uh, wrist position and then we save that in a, in a file, okay? This was already explained in a, in a previous video, so I'm, I'm not explaining the details on how to do that, okay? This is provided. So once you have, uh, as you can see here, once you have the output of this simulation is this file here. Once you have that, you have to move to MATLAB. Then you have to uh, simply load the file. The idea here, I will just simply run it first, and, uh, and then I will explain how, how it works, okay? So let me just simply run it, this script here. Okay, here it is. So the idea is that we have uh, a 3D, um, or we have a 2D uh, workspace with the coordinates of X and Z. So the X, Z coordinates, but we have split this workspace in two workspaces. One which is um, with positive X, and the other one with negative x, as you can see here. Okay, and this is done up to this point here. Okay, and uh, and then we have uh, turned uh, or flipped this uh, workspace and combined them, both of them. So this is a new polygon with all points of the contour of, uh, of this polygon contains all possible um, limits of my workspace that I would like to do a sweep. Uh, and for that, what I have to do is just simply do a rotation of this plane here over the coordinate Q1, the vertical one of the robot, that will generate this volume here, as you can see. Okay, uh, let me see. There it is. Okay, and um, this is... Uh, uh, in order to do that, what I do is to create a poly shape with uh, this um, polygon here, and then I create a second poly shape here, which is that one, but with the X flipped, okay? And then I do the union of both of them, and then, well, this is just simply for representing all these polygons, and then what I do is just simply to create this strip of this workspace here, um, Control, and I will do that from minus pi to pi, 100 plus 1 uh, times. So I get, in the end, a mesh that I represent. 
and this is done with this sweep workspace function here. It just simply needs the coordinates xz and the amount of points that you want to perform the sweep. So it generates the, the vector with all possible angles from minus pi to pi. And then here, basically what it's doing is just rotating the points, so are the vertices of the, of the mesh, and con constructing a connectivity list with all possible combinations of vertex, and at the end returns the triangulation or a triangulation that I am representing. Okay, But this triangulation is not optimal, so in order to uh, fix this triangulation, uh, what I am proposing is to use mesh mixer software that one here and to fix or to improve uh, the resulting um, sorry the resulting file that I save here okay so I just simply need to import uh, the file which is that one here and as you can see this is uh, the the volume that I have created that contains uh, 37,000 vertices and 74,000 triangles. So I would like to optimize that. So I just simply need to do, to press Control A to enter into this mode here and to improve this mesh. I will remesh. Okay, and that's performing some computations here for remeshing uh, this volume and if I accept you will see that the amount of triangles here the vertices and triangles has been significantly reduced and, and that's uh, much better okay so at the end I just simply need to export and save it in this case I I have already saved it with a different name which is that one here okay and, and you can see that the file size is, is smaller and therefore it's optimized okay then what you have to do is then again back in Copelesim what I have done is I, I have just simply imported the mesh okay and put it here so this is the mesh that I have imported I have also uh, created or added some opacity here so we can see the robot itself so now we can uh, also I have defined the path you can um, you can define yours but the thing is that this path has been on purpose um, created so that some points of the path are outside the workspace so if I try to uh, with the inverse kinematic module if I try to force that the wrist of the robot is uh, following a dummy or in this case a point uh, belonging to that path then whenever this point is uh, inside the workspace the inverse kinematic module will work fine but if it's outside the workspace it won't be able to reach that point okay so we can detect that by just simply um, here what I have done is in this mesh I have set the collidable property so make sure it's collidable and also I have created another object which is located exactly at the wrist position is just a very small sphere here which is um, also collidable and I have just removed all these uh, respondable and dynamic properties it's just simply an object I would like to check if it's colliding or not with my uh, 3d workspace okay and it's a very small uh, sphere here that will indicate that I'm moving just on the boundaries of my workspace. So in order to do that, what I have done is in the tools menu, the calculation module properties, I have created a collision object which checks if there is a collision between the collidable wrist, that sphere I mentioned before, and the 3D workspace, the mesh that we have created with MATLAB. And if we detect uh, a collision, then the quality, which is the 3D workspace, will turn red by checking this option here. Okay. And then also, as you can see here, we have the target, which is the point that I would like to follow. This target has the follow parent path option enabled. So it will follow um, a point on the path. And 
it will uh, just simply all oh, uh, sorry and it's connected the inverse kinematic is linked to the wrist okay so the inverse kinematic module uh, it's in here the inverse kinematic module i have added a new I, ik group uh, set this uh, dls method with 108 iterations and edit the elements and added a tip with the wrist and just simply set to follow the x y and z constraints of this uh, of this uh, target okay so the idea is that if you put the joints in inverse kinematic module the the the, thre the three first joints okay joint one joint two and joint three in inverse kinematic module the software will compute the appropriate angles for those joints so that the wrist is following the target and just the last step is just simply to add a velocity to the path so that the target is moving okay because otherwise it's, it's stopped okay so if you run this simulation you will see that whenever the robot is inside the workspace everything is fine and the the quality in this case is uh, white but if it's outside it's colliding and then it, it turns red and also you can see that by if you take a look here this point red was the target point and the wrist point was actually not following as you can see here not following the target if you're moving outside the workspace okay so this method will help you to try to define or uh, um, to, to design your trajectories within the workspace of the robot. Thank you very much.